So now let's get into some funky stuff. This is one of the funkiest songs ever recorded. Definitely has been sampled hundreds of times by DJs, producers, rap artists uh, for the drum break that comes around five minutes and 20 seconds where everything drops out and it's just the drums. Clyde Stubblefield is the drummer. This is the James Brown track, The Funky Drummer. It's a nine minute song and it, it really is a test of endurance. So be patient with this one in learning it. There's a lot to it. There's a couple of different beats and there's a lot of variation on those beats that Clyde does. But there's some themes that he does that I'll break down for you. The tune starts off a little bit simple and then it, as it progresses, Clyde changes the beats and um, adds a little bit more complexity, adds some ghost notes, adds some hi-hat lifts. So I'll break those things down for you. This is a one-handed 16th note hi-hat groove. Okay, so what that means is it's 16th notes with one hand instead of using two hands. And by using one hand, you can get a lot more intricate on the snare drum as you hear Clyde doing in this track. So the best way to go about the hi-hat is to play it on the tip of the stick on the top of the hat. Nice and light. This is not a rock tune. Um, it's not very heavy and it's nine minutes long. So you really have to take your time with this. And it, it might take you some time to build your endurance to, in order to play this whole song at record tempo, which is 98 beats per minute. So there's a, a decent amount of technique that you need to have in order to, to do that. The biggest thing I can tell you is to stay relaxed. And if you feel tension and you start squeezing the stick, then you're done. It's, it's, it's not rigid, it's loose. So using some fingers is a good idea. But overall, staying loose is the best idea. Once you get tight, then you might start to feel some pain and at that point, you should just stop. Having the Slow Downer app for this one is a great idea because Clyde had really great endurance. If you think about what the schedule was for the James Brown Band, they played maybe six shows a week. And those shows were at least three hours long. And so these guys were staying funky all the time. And uh, you can certainly hear that in this track. Keep that in mind when playing along and take your time with this groove. The basic groove at the beginning starts off like this. So that's how the bass and the kick interact with the hi-hat. And as the song progresses, we get into some other things on the snare drum and the hi-hat. In funk music, there is really not much form. This whole song, they don't change the key, they don't modulate, they just, they groove. Nine minutes. It's basically a groove, this song, with some rapping kind of vocals over top of it and a couple of breaks throughout. So there's not a lot of section changes or any fills or anything like that, like some of the other songs we're talking about. This song heavily relies on the ability to groove. So as the song progresses, James says, bring on the juice. Um, he talks to his band and says, bring on the juice. And so the band or Clyde responds with opening the hi-hat. And this is a really interesting place to open the hi-hat. So when lifting the hi-hat, I don't necessarily think of where to lift my foot up. I think of where to put my foot down. 
And this happens to be on the end of two, where you put your foot down. So just hi-hat and left foot alone. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. So putting the foot down on the and of two and the and of four will get you that lift on the E of two and the E of four, which comes after the backbeat on two and four. So like I said, this, this song is a slow build and Clyde slowly adds more elements to the snare drum and the kick drum as the song progresses. So it really just stays interesting as it goes along. Something he does um, is now some ghost notes, some more ghost notes. So the next kind of groove is like so. really want to make sure that those ghost notes are right in line with your 16th notes on the hi-hat. So those are the basic elements of what's going on uh, in the Funky Drummer. The break at five minutes is eight bars and he does basically the same beat. There is a little bit of improvisation in there. Some things that Clyde brings in that are different um, are some buzzes. He kind of pushes the stick into the head. And the kick drum has a little bit of variation in it too. Like I said, this is a improvised kind of beat where um, it changes. Again, Clyde was a jazz drummer before he was a funk drummer. When Clyde was coming up as a young person, there was no such thing as funk music. R&B was just coming into the picture when Clyde was young. So when Clyde learned how to play the drums, it was jazz. So a lot of these early R&B cats have a jazz sound to them. Their drums sound jazzy. Um, they're tuned up and um, are bop style drum sets. That's an essential part of this early funk sound is that drum sound, a cranked up bebop kind of drum set sound where the snare drum is really cranked up too. Another thing is, is that when Clyde plays the rim shots, they're very low. As a matter of fact, everything in this song is low. So it's very different than Jeff Buckley's Eternal Life where we're really laying into the drums. We're, we're light and tight, as they say. Light and tight on the drums. Tip of the stick on the top of the hat, really low rim shot. Still sounds like a rim shot, but is only two and a half, three inches off the drum. Different than this. And those ghost notes are super low too. I'm gonna play along to the track.
Okay, so really funky stuff there from Clyde Stubblefield on the Funky Drummer. One of the funkiest grooves of all time. Good luck with it. Take your time and make sure you be funky.